Welcome to Copyright and Curated Content for Open Educational Resource Repositories, presented by UBC Library and Copyright at UBC. Copyright and Curated Content is the fifth in a series of five videos. The purpose of this video is to set out the copyright requirements that will have an impact on using curated content in an open educational resource repository. Curated content in this context is material that you acquire from other places, like disciplinary websites, institutional repositories, and from others not associated with your repository. In the slides that follow, we will discuss 1. Copyright Basics 2. Identifying Conditions for Use and 3. Permissible Uses of External Content When using content that you did not create, you need to ensure that the manner in which you want to make use of it is legitimate, that is, that the use meets any license or legal requirements assigned by the owner of the content. This means that we need to understand what conditions pertain to making legitimate use of others' content. In general, once an idea is expressed in a written statement, in a sound recording, as computer code, it achieves copyright status. The same may be true even for a graffiti tag. This is what the term fixed means. The expression is in a material form, capable of identification and of some permanence. So, even unpublished documents, like one's diary or a report that is not issued, enjoy copyright protection. In copyright speak, such things are termed works. The most important legal requirement in copyright law is the copyright owner's sole determination to make the work available in a format and a market she considers appropriate. At the same time, there are many things that copyright does not protect. This is because they are too well known, or do not display the level of originality to enjoy copyright. The legitimate use of copyrighted works relies on a basic consideration discussed in the previous slide. When identifying potential content for your repository, you should assume, absent any positive statement to the contrary, that the material is copyrighted. If you want to use it, you may need to add permission seeking to your planning schedule. If you identify resources on websites, in blogs, or in print publications, there are likely restrictions on copying and uploading the works to an open educational resource repository. Recall what was said earlier. In most instances, the copyright owner has the sole right to decide whether a work can be used. An open educational resource repository is an open public website in that users are encouraged to copy and reuse, repurpose, display, and distribute the content. Consider that material in an open educational resource repository is available globally. What impact would this have on the copyright owner's ability to market content when it is freely available elsewhere? The next slide discusses common means of identifying the copyright status of works. A public website is one that does not require authentication to gain access to the content. Even where it does not require authentication to access, that does not mean that the public is invited to copy and reuse the content without permission. Look for expressions like terms of use, copyright, terms of service, and similar language on the site to identify the copyright protection of the content. Many limit copying for personal use and restrict public display or distribution. Technological protection measures, TPMs, and other digital locks actively prevent the copying, downloading, and uploading of a site's content. In most jurisdictions, the breaking of a digital lock is illegal. As a result of these considerations, it is recommended that posting to a public website come from openly licensed content or works in the public domain. This has been one in a series of interrelated presentations on copyright and open educational resource repositories presented by UBC Library and Copyright at UBC. For more information, please refer to the following Copyright at UBC website resources.